I'd now like to invite Eric Rondelat from Philips. Eric is the Executive Vice President and Chief Executive Officer of Philips Lighting Group. Eric's going to focus on energy efficiency. Eric, thank you. Well, thank you so much. I suspect that some of you here in the room share my frustration with these uh, conferences on, on climate change and that results very often in no or very little tangible actions. But I'm here because I believe that we're defending a very important cause and it needs to be relentlessly uh, talked to. So I don't know if it's going to be energy efficiency, energy productivity, but I want to talk to you about the fact that we absolutely need to save more energy than what we do today and we need to do it faster. We will see that technology is available. We will see that that can be done in developing countries or in mature economies without sacrificing our quality of life. In most of the time, improving further people's lives. We will see that this has a positive impact on human development, on economic growth, and on combating climate change. But what I would like to start with I don't know if I can say scream out, because I'm French and my English is not always totally accurate, or spell out what I would call an absolute sense of urgency. We need to act now. Two striking facts. Climate is changing. So what are we waiting for? That those beautiful loans on which you want to play tennis during the summer, all the loans that are in front of the White House, dry and die before we act? The previous talker has spelled out that we have an increasing demand of energy in the world. Why? Because population are growing, because people are moving from rural areas to cities, because there is a rising middle class, because there is an aging population. But there's a striking number. That increase is twice faster than our capacity to save energy. But this is the good news. There are solutions. Technologies are available, and they're financially viable. So let me give you an example about lighting, which is what we basically do at Philips Lighting. And one striking fact, if we were changing all the light sources in the world today and replacing them with energy-efficient lighting, LED, we would be saving 8% of the worldwide electrical consumption. Then if we connect those lights and we monitor them, further optimizing their consumption, we can save 30% more. So it's doable. Let me now move you to the developed world, and we're going to Los Angeles. So what happened in Los Angeles, basically, uh, we, took, uh, we, we took a dumb LED street light, and we screwed on it a wireless connector, which is basically integrating a chip, which is very similar to the ones you have in your smartphone. In doing so, we are connecting the light pole to a software mainframe where it can be geo-localized, where it can be remotely monitored, where it can be remotely serviced, so we can anticipate on maintenance, increasing uptime, while at the same time delivering a better light. And statistically, we have proven that in doing so, we are reducing the number of accidents uh, in the street. Now, let's look at the world. 300 million light poles are sitting on our planet today. Only 10% of them are made of energy efficient lighting and only 1% of them are connected. We have a fabulous potential there. Let's change gears and let's go to the developing countries. Isn't that amazing? I'm always flabbergasted, you know, in the age of smartphone and driverless cars. There are still 1.1 billion people that do not have access to electricity. So they don't have access to electrical lights. So they use wood fires, they use kerosene, they use candles. We know that fires and respiratory illness due to kerosene are killing 1.5 million people in this region on a yearly basis. I think that's unbearable. So this is the solution. It is a very simple solar-powered LED lantern. Guess what? It's a one-off investment, and it's cost one-third of the yearly spent 
in this population for their wood or kerosene intake. So it is also financially viable. I am proud to be leading a company that has made a stated goal to end light poverty by the end of 2030. But let's make no mistake. If we lift out of darkness this population, we will also boost economic growth. Let's remember that when the Western economy developed, happened at the exact same time when businesses and homes were connected to the grid and they got access to electricity. And lighting is the first service that they acquired and it fueled the enterprise. Since I've started to talk today, our global population has increased by 1,600 people. The same amount of people since I've started to talk has moved from rural areas to cities. In that space of time, we have been consuming 400,000 kilowatt hours of electricity worldwide, while at the same time pumping 200,000 tons of CO2 in the atmosphere. We need to act now. So we've talked about Paris, we've talked about COP21. I think we need as leaders and we need the people that are going to be there to take definite measures to act faster on climate change, while at the same time increase the goals that we have for energy saving. They are too low at this point in time. And we've seen that it's totally practical. You know, if we renovate our infrastructure, we will at the same time create jobs. And if we bring solar technologies to the developing world, we understand also that we will help them to kickstart their economy. So let me finish uh, with the last statistic. If we were increasing our capacity to save energy from 1.3% to 3%, and we've seen that it's doable, we would be saving 2 trillion euros by 2030, being able to reinvest that money elsewhere. Well, at the same time, by 2020, we would be creating 6 million jobs. So I can understand that if combating climate change is not always a totally compelling argument, these statistics should normally wake up the most cynical businessmen and politicians on our planet and make them move, make them act, because the action is what counts. Action before it's too late. Thank you so much.